Hello everybody, the Power BI team was released the August Power BI desktop update and we're going to cover it here. There are cool reporting features, some performance improvements and a ton more. Let's dive in. So first of all, shapes. They have added more formatting options to shapes so you can have customize them the way you need them basically. The next one is about the X constant line. I don't know if you remember but they have added the possibility to add a constant line to your graphs. The biggest criticism for that it was that it was a hardcore number. You could not, you know, bind it to a measure or a column or anything like that. But you can do it now and this is a really really cool. Not only that, they have actually give you given you the possibility to shade the area behind or you know after the line to do some color formatting really really cool it is really exciting to see this actually so now this is a very useful feature that i plan to use a lot sensitivity labels they have now given the possibility to administrators to set a default sensitivity label before if nothing was set nothing showed up now you can have the possibility for example set all new reports both in Power BI desktop and the service to have a specific setting for example confidential but obviously report creators can change that but by default when they create something new either on the desktop or the service a default label will be set okay more about sensitivity levels they have arrived to paginated reports so if you're a paginated report users this is a thing for you too now it isn't preview though Q&A synonyms. Now, as you probably know, across a large organization, different teams might have different wordings for the same thing. For example, something can be called sales or net sales or total sales. So in order to be able to use Q&A effectively, the model needs to know that. It needs to know that sales can be net sales, total sales, or whatever it is that the teams are using. So, this update allows the organization to actually add in their own synonyms into the model. If you go to QA setup and then fill synonyms, teams can add their own synonyms and then it will be synchronized across the model on Power BI service and then obviously on the model they are working on, which is a great thing. What I was wondering is like what happened when people use the same word for different things, how that ambiguity gets resolved. I, I actually don't know. So I guess it's good for somebody to actually go and look in the service to see what synonyms are being used and find ambiguities. But if you guys know, just let me know always in the comment box. To use this functionality, you actually need to tick the box, share your synonyms with everybody in your organization, both on Power BI desktop and the service. I don't know if you said it on the desktop and publish it will save, just check it out just in case. So, improvements for DAX, always welcome. Here's the thing, before, if you wanted to specify date and time, you, you have to do a, lot of, a little bit of DAX, use some different functions, because you could not just specify, this is my date time uh, field. They have improved that, so now you have the possibility to uh, specify dates and times up to the second okay so you don't need to use different functions for that this is the you'll see it here so this is the way you will do it in the new way which is quite cool evaluation configuration settings here's the thing if your um, power query uh, queries are loading very very slow that queries are not working as you want and you have more power in the machine in your computer Chris Webb actually showed us in a blog post a while ago how to hard code that and it actually made it to Power BI Desktop, which is quite cool. So you will have two settings. You have the maximum number of simultaneous evaluations, so how many queries can run in parallel. And you have the possibility to set the maximum memory per evaluation, which is to 4 meg, but you can actually increase that. You can increase that just for your model. And the setting is on the page, on the uh, settings pane. Now, be careful though. You don't want to use all the com your computer's memory for Power Query. It'll kill it. I, I haven't tried, but I can only guess. They recommend you not to bump this up, at least to, or the maximum to bump this, the memory up is 90%. Okay, I still think that's way too much. But hey, give it a go, test different settings, see what works for you, for your specific model. This is actually quite nice. 
So automatic aggregation for direct query data. So this is something that is going to happen, in, you know, behind the curtains. You won't see this, but it is actually quite cool. So you have the possibility to create aggregations to speed up your model. So for example, if your query, the query that you normally run is at a country level, but your data is at a city level, so what you could do was to create a country level table that would be used just for those queries. Now that is going to happen automatically behind the hoods in order to improve performance. So the model will get analyzed, the queries that are often run will get analyzed, and then those aggregations will be created on the background to speed queries, which is very, very cool. So we'll see. Let's see if you see an improved performance on your direct query data sets. Let us know. Now, for all of you DAX nerds, you now have the possibility to use DAX to query Power BI datasets using the REST API. So the blog post explains in detail how this can be done. So go there and check it out if you're interested in this feature. So who needs more data? <laughs> okay, so if that is you, you want to have detailed historical activity information for your premium datasets, now, the Power BI team has teamed up with the, Power, the Azure Log Analytics team, and they are going to give you the possibility to get detailed information about how your datasets are used or not used, and if you have any bottlenecks, things like that. The cool thing about this is that you actually will be able to move your data to your own Azure. Okay, So you have the possibility to turn that on on the Power BI service, and then configure your Azure Log Analytics and get the data there. And then not only that, they have actually created a template report. So you can just plug it in and get all the information already from the get-go without having to figure out, okay, what do I have here? How do I start? I think it's a great way to get quick started into this. So give it a go if you are interested in detailed information about your premium data sets. So, last but not least, mobile updates, they have improved the report feature to make the actions that you can take more discoverable, okay? So, this is all for the August update. I am going to review the July update later this week, so stay tuned if you have been on vacation and you haven't, you know, stay up to date as I haven't, so I will make a review for that probably Wednesday or Thursday, something like that. And uh, my favorite update is the X constant line that is actually binded to a measure or a column or things like that. I think that is super, super cool. And obviously the, the performance improvements on Power Query are quite cool. I'm a bit worried that if I tune it up to my super machine, I might not discovery things are running slowly. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do with that, but we'll see, we'll see. I'll let you know if I figure something out. What is your favorite update? Let me know as always in the comments below and for the July update, just wait a few days and I'll do a review on that too. Nice to see you again. See you soon, bye bye.